All right, welcome back. Welcome back to Greenbox Gaming Plays Delta Green Impossible Landscapes. My name is Joe. I will be your handler for this operation, and I am joined by my uh, good friends and some of my mediocre friends. Uh, and I'll give them in no particular order and let you try to figure out which one is which. Uh, by Jean, playing Benedict. Hello. There. Ooh, that's, Again. That sounds like a good friend. That sounds like a good one. That is. Uh, it's, uh, yes. By Brad. Good friends have mugs. Good friends have Delta Green Hello mugs. There. Yes. <laughs> oh, ooh, <laughs> that sounds like a good friend too. Uh oh. That might you might might be uh might be some competition. And by Dace playing Benji. You're awake. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I said that before you got on Joe, and he thought it was a Skyrim reference and not a prequel reference. Oh, so, okay. Now he countered that with an actual Skyrim reference. Yeah. I'm, I'm such a bad internet nerd. I'm just not up to date on much. Just not. Up Can't to keep date my references it. straight. Mm -mm. Well, how's it going, guys? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. The, by the way, those are some nice mugs you guys got yes. there. What is that? Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, look at that. It takes about, about that. Yeah. What is it in American measures? About a quart of coffee, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is enough to get uh, us closer, closer, closer to a gallon, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, I got the guys some uh, some Delta Green mugs for Christmas. They're uh, amazing. Yes, yeah. they're my favorite. Got one mug. for himself, <laughs> and for some reason shipped it to me. No, the, <laughs> along with the other. No, three. because the idea is when we met for the Christmas one shot. The idea is that you would that uh, FedEx or whoever I sent it with wouldn't be terrible at their jobs, and that you would have them, and we would all unpack them there together, like like Christmas almost. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's so romantic. But it didn't happen. That's why I'm really, I'm truly trying to build nice. a romantic vibe with us. That's, uh... I feel it. Good. I'm glad you picked it, Father John. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing? Uh, the Christmas season is come and gone. We're now onto the dreary, dreary January. Depending on where you are, I guess. I quite like January. Yeah. Uh, I won't lie. I like January more than I like Christmas season. Really. Is it is it is it yeah. because are you a, a some type of Grinchy curmudgeon? Is that why? Yeah, uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a big fan of Santa. Mm. Of giving. Well, good news, he doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh boy, <laughs> do we have good news for you? <laughs> it was it was on a, camera. A thirty-something year old John. man believed in Santa Claus <gasps> until this moment. <laughs> do we need a good thumbnail pic? <gasps> yeah. There you go. <laughs> You'll never believe. <laughs> is it is it about the new beginnings in January? Do you, do you subscribe to the whole New Year thing? Is it like a new lease on life? Do you do um um what you call them resolutions? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, those ones. I'm gonna say reverberations, <laughs> but that's not right. I that's do more reverberations. Do you do New Year's I reverberations? Do. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> it involves a lot of drugs, like reverberations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I think it's just the uh, festive seasons have always been like very hectic and frenetic. So mm. I, I like mm. the respite that comes afterwards. Not that I don't Definitely. like spending time with family and everything, but uh, it does yeah. get a bit hectic. I am going to tread carefully because I know my mother listens to this podcast. <laughs> That's right. Next topic, please. Do. Tread carefully. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Brad? How's, uh, what's, how do you feel in here in January? You, uh, just right back in the grind. Basically, preparing for the cold weather. Um, I like the holidays about just as much, maybe more than Jean and Dace, but who's to say? Yeah, you know, I I traditionally was not a big Christmas person. Um, just never was. I just never was my jam. I don't know. Over the last like two three years, like I've really found myself kind of letting myself get into it, like. I don't do a lot of traveling. We don't really decorate. I mean, you have like a tree. I don't really decorate stuff, but just like kind of just let myself enjoy the aura of it, I guess, you know. Well, I only like it now probably a little bit more because the nephews. So we always mm. have like stuff to do with them. Yeah. Basically. It is different when it's just adults. You're all are all kind of standing around with, you know, wearing ugly sweaters. And it's like, yeah, it's <laughs> This like this is definitely not the same, but kids definitely bring that energy to it, that magic. They certainly it. bring something. 
I don't right. know if I'd call it magic, but they bring something. <laughs> Did you have a different experience Flute. with your nephews? They bring uh, flu. That's what they, they bring. brought me for Christmas. They bring disease. Flu, plague, a. stench, <laughs> sticky fingers. Ooh, sticky fingers. <laughs> Why is everything so sticky Why is it so time? sticky? Why, what did you yeah, touch? You just Why is it so sticky? Yeah. That's a hell of a thing to complain about. <laughs> it's like, the good thing is they are not your kids, so you can just uh, kind of turn them back towards their parent and they say, okay, go be sticky over there now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go fester in your own stickiness <laughs> and your miserable viscous viscosity. Yeah. Did you get... <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've never... <laughs> I'm about to write that one down. <laughs> That's amazing. You can have that one for free. Yeah. Well, you guys, uh, you guys were up in Gatlinburg, did the whole family vacation thing with Jean in town and whatnot. Yep. Um, yep. That was a yeah. It was good. A lot of lot of lot lot of family time. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, <laughs> the manner in which you said that true. was uh, <laughs> a lot of family time. Keep in mind, your mom does watch. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we um. Oh, I was fine. I think the highlight for me was going to the Pepper Palace. Mm. I, ooh, I remember the Pepper Palace. Yep. I tried like 15 different hot sauces. It was rad. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was thinking like black pepper when you said that. <laughs> just, <laughs> just all sorts of different black peppers. <laughs> well, like, Jean, like, I mean, like, how many, how many tourist trap towns in the U.S. have you been to? And how does Gatlinburg compare to their others? I quite like Gatlinburg. I was thinking about it. We'd been there before, but we only went to Pigeon Forge. Oh, okay. And Gatlinburg is, even though it's touristy, it's actually got a bit of character. Uh, it does. Whereas Pigeon Forge feels like a, a bit of a Vegas type thing. Mm. Yeah, super weird <clears throat> hills country Vegas. I guess I've never been mm -hmm. into the t proper town Pigeon Forge. Like all the time I spent there is like in the cabin. Yeah. Yeah, you're not missing anything. Yeah. We went to four but arcades in three days. Ooh. It's a lot of Jesus. arcades. It's a lot of arcades. For the so kids, I'm assuming. Afterwards. <laughs> we ate candy that was left in the arcade machine. Oh, oh no. It was delicious. Dace, do you remember when we... When, that time we went down to the coast, I think with your folks, we went to that arcade and played the Terminator shooting game. Hell and yeah, we spent dude. spent like $20 in quarters each. To get to what was, we assumed was the end of the game, to only find out it was the second level yeah, of the game. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say in Oxford, do y'all remember the the prize was like a Terminator ham? Am I making that up? One oh, of the big shit, prizes. No. Yeah, what? that was that like was the, real. Yeah, I don't. Oh, I don't strip down robotic Terminator ham. It yeah, was just like yeah. behind I like the arcade counter, like just staring at you, yeah. mocking you, up, up, unattainable. Up, up, up. <laughs> Well, like, I, I don't know. I guess just the, I guess we were kind of right at the end of the primary like arcade time. Like, like by the like by the time we were kind of moving like up into our teenage years, like arcades everywhere just started to close. Like, there's very few. Well, now. it's because malls started dying right. right and left, and that's where all the arcades are. Yeah. The, now they're all online. <laughs> now that's all just gambling, which I guess is just what it was kind of anyway do you guys remember okay actually let me, let me phrase this differently do you guys remember hearing about some friends who uh broke into <laughs> the abandoned mall uh in our hometown do you remember those <laughs> i think uh, those acquaintances telling us about I that i think story? i heard about those <laughs> distant acquaintances yeah um are these the same distant acquaintances that set a couch alight these uh Possibly. Sounds like them. It sounds just dudes like are them. fucking crazy. Yeah, That's just, what they would do. <laughs> just gotten all sorts of things. Do you do you remember that? Do you remember? remember, mothers are watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the, like I said, it doesn't matter. They're distance acquaintances. That's yeah, you know. true, true, <laughs> true. And statute of limitations. And statute. which is great for those guys. <laughs> for those guys, I'm glad they have that uh, to and those protections. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Oh god. But yeah, that was like you wanna talk about like a liminal space of the abandoned yeah. shopping mall. Totally. Uh, I even remember um uh, two friends playing a prank on one friend. You remember hearing about that? <laughs> yes. Yes. And daring that one friend to pull something. Yep. 
And then the al- they already knew I, I know. the alarm was going to go off. <laughs> That's right. And abandoned him. <laughs> <laughs> the two friends were allegedly <laughs> watching friends. him walk up to the door and just like scooting backwards, like <laughs> ready to fucking take off and leave him in the dust. Like you know how how Alex like, sprinters will get down on their chocks, like yeah. getting ready to run. So the two <laughs> friends were like literally because the two friends knew that the alarm was going to go off, and the two friends got down <laughs> on your set, <laughs> ready get set and then uh the alarm went off and they were so far ahead of the you, third friend that's you guys need to keep better company i think that's what we learned from this <laughs> you ever, you imagine you know that scene in jurassic park where uh uh the girl the female protagonist uh doctor is with the hunter and he's like i got him in my sights and she, he's like run <laughs> That's what that friend was like <laughs> when the alarm went off, just like tripping and falling. And <laughs> it was, it was for them, for our acquaintances. It was, um, it was a truly funny time, I'm sure. And just, <laughs> and they told the story so well, which is why I think it's so funny now. Um, mm, vivid, vivid, vivid uh, recollection. Uh, God, yeah, it, of somebody else's experiences. This is amazing. It was almost as if it, they told it so well. It was almost as if you were there, almost. Sure. Almost. Yeah, good times. Yeah, but anyway, speaking of uh, running away from liminal spaces as fast as one can, uh, let's talk about where you guys ended up at the end. Well done. <laughs> at the, that's I, that, I don't know that that, one, that was a rocky one. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about where no, you guys I... ended up now in this abandoned house. How about that? You guys ready to jump in? Are you excited? Yes. You're gonna hit us with yes. that recap. Because we need it desperately. <laughs> mm. And it has to be more succinct and excellent than the last one. Yes, the last one was a little drawn out in, in the episode zero. But after everything that happened, let's just say that. After after escaping, after being drawn back into what you thought was Delta Green by Barbas. Uh, after finding out that was not true. After going to Vegas to uh, take out one of these vectors of the, yellow, of the King and Yellow Infection in Ophelia Citri, Michael Whitworth's fiance. After returning and being drawn into the night world via the Dorchester. After meeting a whole host of weirdos, people that you had heard about previously, Asa Darabondi, um, Mr. Wild, uh, you know, all the members, all the staff of the hospital. After being drawn through the library where you may or may not have seen yourselves in the past, after going and being pulled through the, uh, with, after summoning Bale, King Bale, or Timothy Bale, and being pulled into the theater, after consuming the Patsu, and narrowly for, for, for Hank, escaping the clown, you guys are in a house. A house that looks like it's for sale. Uh, everything, there's like some furniture, but it looks like, it's like cookie cutter furniture. It has no soul to it. It's definitely the kind of stuff that a realtor puts in a house. And it's all covered in sheets. You guys wake up, have a little bit of a time, for those of you who, uh, had, uh, (laughs) new mental breakdowns. And you guys were presented with this, uh, this kind of invitation via this clockwork child. Uh, you guys are here. You guys are back in Boston. You guys made it. And I'm sure the world is just going great. Now, you have with you everything that you had previously. You had everything that you had on your person. You had your jackets. <clears throat> you have your your firearms. You have all of that. Uh, one of you even has a set of keys for the van. Uh, the van that you got back in Vegas and drove cross country in. Uh, you still have your unmarked, uh, you know, rental van that you managed to kind of get away with. Um, and if any of you peek outside, you see that you are located in a pretty kind of idyllic suburb. Um, there's a little, uh, there's a little sign outside in the front lawn that says, you know, for sale, you know, it has the name of a real realtor on it. Um, and you can see that the van is parked in the driveway. Um, and the way it's kind of all arrayed, it kind of looks like, oh, it, they might be a maintenance van or a moving van or something like that. It, it all just kind of fits in. 
Uh, and lastly, I will remind you that on the floor of the um, on the floor of the actual um, living room is a demonic sigil, uh, the sigil for uh, Malphas, M A L P H A S. Um, and after being presented with the invitation, you guys are kind of awake and ready to go. Um, so, and last time in session zero, we kind of talked about how you guys felt or how your characters felt about things. So, uh, this is it. This is where we get back into the action. Dace, you got something or? Oh, no, no. Sorry. I was just thinking is the, um, is the creepy little robot. You said that kind of just dematerialized or. Right. Yeah, like, you know, you two of you were kind of coming out of a psychotic state and uh, Benedict, you know, when he takes it and pretty much the second that anyone kind of looks away, it's gone. Um, yeah, but yes, yeah, it is. It has gone. So what do you Malthus. Malthus. <clears throat> he buildeth houses, high towers and strongholds, and he casteth down the same stones atop the heads of a conjurer's enemies. He can destroy enemies' thoughts and desires, give good familiars, and quickly bring artificers together from all places of the world. You know, the funny thing... Guys, as the crow. Good? You know, it's funny. Um, you... Benji, you... And I imagine that maybe even Benji just says that out loud. Like, maybe you guys, like... Maybe you go into the kitchen, and there's, like, again, like, everything's very cookie-cutter. You know, no soul, no no individuality to it. You go in, there's like, you know, a single set of glasses in the cabinets. You Maybe you get like a glass of water and Benji's standing there and maybe says this while standing over the seal. Um, mm -hmm. And something strikes you, Benji, something a little odd. You, you... You feel something within you. You feel something within you, not just... You feel it well up. Now, you know about the Ars Goetia. Uh, Benji is, is an expert on all things occultic. Uh, one of the foremost in the world. And you think... You think that you might... You feel like you know more about this demon than you did before. You feel like you have some insight just into it. Recounting it. Yeah, something like that. Wow. In fact, as Over Benji... that sigil. Yeah, well, and as Benji is standing here, Benji, you, you maybe cast your thought to another demon. You think you know a little bit about that one. Even more so than that. Oh, I can feel something bubbling in my guts. I think I gotta take a lore dump. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lore dump. <laughs> I'm not sure these restrooms are operational. <laughs> Benji. Oh, Benji, you feel <laughs> like... Bill, Benji, you feel like you could... F you feel like if you needed to talk to this Malthus... You feel like you could f find this. You feel like you could find this demon. How? Well, Benji takes a peek outside... Uh, Outside at the sign, the realtor sign, you see a name and a, a picture of a uh, of a realtor wearing a, a female realtor wearing like a smart business suit. Uh, you see the name Patricia McSwain. You feel like that might be her. Wait, that might be the demon. Yeah. All right, guys, that realtor's a demon. That's my office <laughs> right there. <laughs> Benedict is um, skeptical immediately. Psychotic break continuing in his mind. Also, I think there's Jews on the floorboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, current events. <laughs> that's not anti-Semitism. That's just current events, everyone. Let's calm down. <laughs> uh, okay, let me pull up my character sheet. Um, yeah. I'm going to do a uh, alertness check. Oh, can we refresh our check marks? Yeah, did we sleep? Are we, do we feel refreshed? Mm, you know, 
I'll say yeah. Let's just let's go ahead and say yeah. Go ahead and do that. Do we feel refreshed after that psychotic break? <laughs> is it a refreshing I, psychotic how break? Refreshing it's, just, ah, break. <laughs> it's like taking a good nap through a uh, nightmare. Deepest sleep you've ever had. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do an alertness like on her, and just the front. She's in the front driveway type area. Is that what you? So that was the a sign. If you want to do an alertness on this sign, oh, that it's a, sorry, it's a sign, not her. No, 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 no. <laughs> I want this alertness no, check no. on this sign. I want the alertness I... on the sign. I want to see this. That's a critical. Critical. I want to know twenty-two. No. That's a twenty-two. <laughs> <laughs> um so there's actually uh maybe maybe you find a business card uh there on the table you know there's like a, maybe like a small as you were to enter the front door there's like a little coffee table that has like some bottles of water on it or something and like a little stand that's got some business cards in it and you see right there you see uh patricia mcswain um I show it to the guys. Yeah. And, and there's a like, there's another card as well. Um it says uh and with another uh another woman's little picture on it and it says Marie J Malthius. There's a, another card with another name on it? Yeah, it looks like another realtor. Marie J Malthius. Yes, Mal Malthius. With a TH as opposed to a PH. Okay. And I'm assuming this has a uh, address to her office or phone number. Yeah, there's phone know. numbers and office address. Looks like they're they're Remax agents, perhaps in a some type of um, office together. Uh, remind me, what did Bile tell us to do? Wasn't it pretty cut and dry? Like go to a hotel, find a bottle. Uh, that was the letter. I that don't. We just got yeah. given by I think, the creepy thing. I, I think I think Bile had also told you something similar. Okay. He, he mostly had cryptic messages about everyone playing their part and stuff like that. Mm, I thought I, when if we I'm, asked him what we should do next, he just like straight up told us. I don't right? think it was that cut and dry. Uh, that being been said... fucked up again. <laughs> That being said, I'm not near as hesitant about meeting a a demon as I was prior to meeting Bael. Like and some of them are good folk, you know? It's discriminatory to just automatically <laughs> assume that a demon is evil. Yeah. A lot of anti-demon I, bias out there. I'm going to err on the side of not being so excited about the demons that just apparate out of nowhere. Um, I've got a general distrust of things that move like that. It's a stance. <laughs> on um, on that note, how how are you both feeling? Are you okay? You, uh, I know we're all excited to get back to work and we're hot on the trail, but yeah, I feel a little uncomfortable, and I just feel like we might need to talk about what the hell just fucking happened. I feel great. I just had the most refreshing uh, catatonic break. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was some fucked up shit back there in that behind the stage area. It's crazy, man. Benji, you right? look about as normal as usual, and um, <laughs> I guess that's it's about to be expected. But Hank, well, uh, yeah, I'm a little more worried about Hank. So just just sit in the corner. You'll be okay. I'm sure. I'm sure you're fine. Hank, are you? And he kind of like gives him a, an empty pill bottle to play with. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's got some change in it. Are we just Hank? Are we ready to just get back to work? I know Benji is ready for this. Are, are we just we're back in it? Do we have any other choices? Or we just we have to out Fra us through? <clears throat> Frankly, I'm not entirely certain what's true and what's not true with uh, uh, Benedict, but. One thing I do know is I don't feel particularly... Uh, I don't want to involve anything, anyone else in what we just went through. Uh, if we do take a rest, I would prefer it if we just stay uh, secluded from anyone that we care about and uh, get a hotel room. Uh, it, uh, a night in a hotel room would probably do us some good. 
before we go straight into meeting this uh, realtor or whatever she is. Okay. And um, Benji, Benji, get back here. Uh, we, we also have to keep in mind that Delta Green is no longer our friend or the program or whoever the fuck we were talking to. It sounds like they got they got Marbus. Um, and Hank sorry, is more Marcus. Uh, they got Marcus. on he's more uh, he's more uh, into that idea than he was prior so he would definitely agree with Benedicta. He doesn't want to contact really anyone to be honest. So we have no support. We're lone wolfing this. I wonder if my cats are still alive. Hank, when's the last time you talked to your boys? <laughs> my boys. There's nothing quite like dragging people back into it. <laughs> I can't. Uh, their names are kind of blurry. I, I just need some sleep. I can't remember if it's Junior or Jasper or JJ. <laughs> right. Well, let's get some sleep then so you can remember your children's <laughs> names. <laughs> Okay, well look, we can we can carry on. I think we have a, a clear roadmap for this nightmare journey. I I just I think I just wanted to check in to make sure that we all agree that this is now real. And I don't know if we should think too much about what we just went through, but is I don't know if there's anything we can do, even if this is not real. And by the way, Hank, that was downright heroic. You taking on that murder clown? That was so dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really stupid guys yeah I've never I've never went head toe to toe with anything like it it was like my strikes just went right through it yeah it was, it was so like, painfully obvious that that thing would kill you in one hit man you just went <laughs> for it that's bravery right there Jeez. it didn't kill me in one hit what did it do I forgot it like you it, almost died I saw bits of you floating off into the ether when it touched you. Uh, yeah. That was... You had no chance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, next time, let's get some sleep next time I'm bringing an IED. <laughs> and it, we'll see what what it does against that. Yeah, agreed. Yes. Sure. Hank, let's bring an IED into the fever dream of us being committed into an insane asylum. Naturally. Yep. That's actually a really good call. I need to make some... Uh... I need to do some black market checks after we get up tomorrow. So so right now, it's probably... You guys kind of came to, and it probably took you an hour or two to kind of get up and get running after you guys had your breaks. And, you know, it's probably about noon at this point. Um, so you have... It sounds like you guys are really interested in rest and recuperation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I I just want to regroup and find some supports. <clears throat> like we need to reestablish where we are. If we're just by ourselves, then we need to operate like that. If we're not, yeah. then we need to lean on people. I don't think we have any support anymore, do we? Is there somebody that st that sticks out to you? I could I could always try phone my brother if I need anything. Uh, I'm not sure what he'd be good for. I think that would be up to the narrator to figure out what Barlow's stats sheets are, but um, you hear the I'm voice not... too. <laughs> I do, I do the whole time. All the he time. asks, "Have you heard it? How how much time has passed, it? Joe? How much time has passed since you guys went into the Dorchester? Yeah, yeah. One night. Okay. Oh wow. No way. Yes. Yeah. If you guys now like pull out your phones or check anything, it's the next day. Do I have any Bro? messages? Um, well, let's let's let the dice decide that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> let's see here. Let's see. Let's let's roll. Let's roll a d one hundred. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that's a lucky roll. What do you think is lucky here? Do you think it's lucky that you've received some messages from someone you know, or not? We find a friend who can help us. That's what my definition of luck would be. We do not get contacted by the murder clown. That would be unlucky. But also, what about Delta Green? Do you want to be uh, contacted by Delta Green? I don't know if it's lucky or unlucky at this point. 
<laughs> All right, we'll we'll say that you probably have a um, that you probably have a passing kind of um, message from like your brother, Barlow. Okay, because uh, he's the only human person you have on your bonds list, I believe. Yes. Okay. Uh, the rest, the are, rest are, are Genji and shit who may not be a human and a pigeon, and a <laughs> pigeon, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, you see, like, something that Barlow has probably sent you uh, a message about nothing in particular. Uh, maybe he says something, he sends you a text about, like, you know, um, that your your bills, you know, a bunch of your bills came. That he checked your mail while you were gone because you had had him taking care of uh, Papua New Guinea while, while you were gone, right? Um, and he says that your bills are there. He's, he's asking basically, like, he's like, what, he's like, how long are you going to be in Boston? Um, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. I think uh, Benedict would just ignore him. It, just send him a thumbs up emoji. Thumbs up emoji. Okay. <laughs> just, you don't answer the question. Uh, you don't just, answer. <laughs> you just, yep. But uh, do I feel more reassured that he's still alive or anything like that? Uh, you tell me how Benedict feels. I think he's he's a Bond, so he's glad that Barlow still exists, and that's something he can latch on to. So he's a little bit more reassured that reality is coming in because of the, the mundane message. Yeah. So I, I think he'd feel a little more sane, maybe, Joe. I think he'd feel more sane. Mm, don't know about that. Oh, it's, uh... <laughs> damn, fuck, damn it. Shit. I can't. I can't blame you for trying. <laughs> uh, Hank's right. looking at, while all this happens, looking for very uh, low budget, like no one would think to find us there type hotels. Like hotels, okay. Um, or motels, rather. Okay. Do you think that there is a? Do you think that there's a particular skill that one would use for that, or are you just going to find a rent by the hour, just like? low end kind of place um that okay like a rent by the hour type low end yeah uh like you guys you find one in one of the kind of the seedier areas of boston like kind of on the edge like between like a middle class and a little bit of a seedier area um it kind of place that is probably uh frequented by uh prostitution you know kind of stuff you know being on the edge of a place area where people have money versus where people don't um, you find one that, you know, you're not entirely sure is not going to end up with you getting bed bugs. Uh, but at this point you're just looking for something, something uh, easy, right? You're looking for something that's. Well, basically where no one, it would be harder for someone to find us that was looking for us type. Is Fair. Yeah. Name. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really make you roll for that specifically. You were able to find something like that. Um, something pretty off the grid. Uh, you find, uh, you know, the snooze in, uh, and it's, it is very much a rent by the hour kind of place. Uh, you're able to find that online. Is that where you guys are going to head then? What is like, are, is the intent here is just to go and rest up? Is that kind of what you want to do? I think so. Yeah. Uh, maybe that makes sense. Maybe we get just a went more through solid some plan in the meantime. Uh, also in the night find out a little bit more about this realtor uh and revisit the note even though it was cryptic i do want to revisit that note and figure because that's probably going to lead us to our main objective um, right let's see what this note. i think like getting back on our terms is the objective here because we just got mm -hmm. the equivalent to nightmare roofied and <sighs> dropped in a house that we're unfamiliar with and with the sigil on the floor so like to get back under our control seems logical to me yeah actually i'm going to change something i said earlier uh your van is not in the front it's actually in the garage so you can actually go into the garage um you know and there's like a clicker like for the garage like sitting on the front seat uh, our van is i guess i missed that our van is in this random house that we woke up in yes yeah God, who I the don't fuck trust did it. that i don't trust it benji you're right i don't trust this Everything's burned. Take off your clothes. Everybody, <laughs> strip down. Strip. <laughs> Take them off. Um, um, yeah. Actually, can, uh, Benji would like to search for bugs. Okay. Yeah, uh, go ahead and make um, me that Let role. me figure out what skill. 
Are we what? looking for golden bugs or regular microphone Why bugs? Why not both? I was thinking regular microphone bugs because what? I'm trying to figure out what skill to roll for this. Probably a search. search. Unless you have oh. some specialty uh. in surveillance. That's my kind of stuff. I don't think you do. I'll also help okay. if I can. Let me see what you guys got. Ooh, what was that? Oh, what Success. have I done? <laughs> you Benji. succeeded, Benedict failed. Yep, 29 I under kicked 50. myself out of roll 20. Oops. <laughs> That's a 20. Well, you succeeded. Yeah, 29 under 50 for Benji and a 63 over 57. Uh, you guys start digging through. Uh, this is this is indeed is the Jambulance. Um, you know, and you start looking through. Um, the keys are in the ignition. Like I said, there is a garage clicker sitting there on the front seat. Um, and, uh, it look very much looks like everything, all the Arby's wrappers are right where you left them. Um, you know, it's, there's a, you know, whatever the large size of a watered down where the ice is melts, melted Sprite from where, uh, Benedict, uh, left it right there in the cup holder. Uh, you, you kind of look up and down far and wide. You can't really derive anything. It doesn't look like that this thing has been messed with. Uh, you would go so far as to say this thing looks almost, almost, unnaturally exactly like you got out of it at the Dorchester. But well, I don't here. think there's any bugs, but it's suspiciously uh, the same. Looks exactly like when we left it at the Dorchester. Also, you do still find your directional mic and your remaining IED, because I think you had two originally. Didn't you? Yeah. So, yeah, the IED so, is still sitting in the back. Benji picks it up and casually tosses it towards Hank. <laughs> For the clown next time. <laughs> you got him next it. round, buddy. Just, he just puts it <laughs> under his shirt. <laughs> so, um, Hank, taking a closer look, it seems like, you know, he's looking at the note that was given to us, you know. Uh, it seems like the first objective there, uh, Hank's kind of getting himself together and Get it, trying to get focused back to old Hank, maybe uh, the next step in the case. And, you know, just number one is find the hotel. Yeah. And then he's looking at yeah. Malthus, um, who seems to be connected to this realtor or the realtor, as uh, Benji says. And one of the top functions or main things this uh, demon can do is it builds towers and houses. So, Hank's wondering if this demon might have some insight to where this like hotel is, the Broad Album Hotel, what reality, what plane, how to get there. So it has something to do with building towers, you know, possibly even labyrinths, yeah. which is second yeah. on the list. Would uh would one yeah. of you guys uh read the note again for just just for our listening audience again, just so they can uh get an idea of again of the invitation that you guys received from the Clockwork Child? Where? Kinda hard for me to read the text. Honestly. Is it the find JC Linz at Hotel Broad Album? Go now, find the hotel, the labyrinth, the author, his bottle, the city, the lake, its shadow, the battle? Yes. Then the party, the dance, the girl in blue, the one singing. Nothing is true except out is through. Love and kisses from Abby. Have we not been to the hotel brought album before? We've guys, never actually been inside, I don't think. You guys have heard a yeah, lot have we just about glimpsed it. it. Haven't we seen it? Or do we just like see well, it in a scene? <laughs> you see pictures. Is, we don't I had a, a suspicion that the night floors was essentially the hotel. This like nineteen twenty thing. I don't know if that's true or not. But that was my thought at first was whenever we went into this, like, 1920-type spot, it was brought out in hotel. Um, I, remember I, mean, I remember specifically Joe describing us seeing doors and there is, like, an ornate iron B on them right. or something. Yes. When did that happen? You guys had seen those in pictures of Asa Darabondi, um, of him standing in front of this building, it not being identified. And that was where, remember, and this this is a while back. This goes back into chapter one. Um, keep in mind, we're in chapter three now. 
So, I mean, it's, it's been a minute. It's been o probably over a year. Um, there was a bit where you guys were able to look in the picture and do some CSI enhance, you know, like, you know, kind of thing on one of the reflections. And you determined that uh, you thought you could see the Eternal Flagstaff, which is in uh, Madison Square Park in New York. But when you went there, you didn't find a hotel. But that's where you found the bookshop. That's where you ran mm -hmm, into yeah. Robert. Robert. Um, and then when Hank, in the last scene where Hank was running from the clown um, in the Dorchester, or in the theater, in the backstages, um, he had seen originally what appeared to be to him in a way that looked like he was looking at the Dorchester from a long way away. Or, or sorry, the broad album. But it actually was like a, a, a miniature. Like, you know, like a, like, an, like a very, very granularly detailed uh, miniature of the hotel with its big letter Bs and, you know, people filing in and out of it. What's the name of that park again? It's uh, Madison. It's Madison Square, I think. I believe. That sounds right. All right, guys. I got a crazy idea. What if we go to Madison Square Park at night? <laughs> It's a crazy idea. Okay. Uh, okay. I would be willing to try that before we. Uh, that is in a different talk. city. <laughs> oh, is that in New York? True. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I forgot we're in Boston. Um, not that you can't go there. I like. I, I don't want. I don't want. Like, I'm just saying, it's in a different city. It's not. You can't just go there tonight. If I'll be frank, I would be. I'd be willing to try anything before we get anyone else involved. But. Uh, yeah. So I would be willing to go back to New York and try to find it ourselves before we rope in this realtor. But uh, that's just my take. When we get to the hotel I mean, and get the Wi-Fi password, I'm going to look and try to search some more stuff about um, this woman online. Maybe it'll steer us in a direction whether to go to her or back to New York. That sounds like a plan. Mm. Okay. Um, on the way to the hotel, Benji is going to text his ex, Zara, and ask if she can check up on his cat. I don't think she's your ex. Are we together? Did I forget that? I thought you guys were together. thought she was your fiancé. Hmm. <laughs> I guess I assumed we were exes because it's like we haven't talked it's to each other the, the entire the entire <laughs> campaign. Well, keep in mind, it's only been a day. Like, well, like, keep two in days. mind, chapter two. Yeah, it's only been it's only been several days. Or like, well, you guys, I think the entirety of everything. Actually, I have. I should probably. I have a list of when everything started. Um, I mean, we fucked off to Vegas, and I didn't say anything to her, so <laughs> I just assumed. Are are that's you a normal relationship? Yeah, are you implying that's not the basis for a strong relationship? <laughs> We're like two house cats living together. Like two you never tell anyone you're going night. to Vegas if you're going to Vegas. Um, yeah, so it's currently the 14th of September. You guys have been in Boston and everything. And this is crazy. This is the way that tabletop games work. You guys have been in Boston and doing shit for about a week. Wow. Like, we've been like back from Las Vegas for a week? No, no, no. Since Chapter 2 started. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's only so been we were week. in Boston, went to Vegas, and been back, and that all took a week, basically. Yeah. Okay. Although I'm okay, looking at it now, and I think I forgot to account for the days that it took you to drive from Vegas back to Boston, which I think had said took, like, two days. Yeah. So we're going to say it's actually the 16th of September, which is a Wednesday. Um, all right. Uh, so, but you're going to message, so that, but you're going to message Zara is what you're going to do. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I haven't talked to you. Know, thumbs up emoji. Uh, <laughs> say that again. You broke up a little bit for me. I will. I'll send my fiance that I haven't talked to in a week a thumbs up emoji. <laughs> well, well, I don't know. Like, do you think that you have have been, have met text her and stuff throughout your time while you've been in Boston here and there? 
It, well, I was going to say that's what a normal person what would, would do. What would Benji do? This is Benji we're talking about. So you're saying no. Probably probably would have... Um, I mean, she would have to be aware of his like fascination with the occult. So he probably would have been like, Hey, hon, um, digging into something real deep. Uh, might not be home for a few days. Uh, love you. Okay, you... And that... That would be within Benji's character. Like she wouldn't be surprised by that. Okay, she yeah she knows that you get into your work, you know, and she she sends you like a text back. That's basically like you know, uh you know like I like you know like that she's worried. You know, it's like asking you is everything okay? Uh, do you know when you're gonna be back? Kind of thing. Um, does she seem? Does she send pictures? To, I'm gonna say no. She send nudes. <laughs> no, there's she doesn't send anything back. Maybe she sends you because you she's staying at your place, right? She lives with Benji. Or does she have her own place? What do you think? We would probably live together. Okay. She sends you a picture of your cat, uh, whose name I don't recall. I think the old one was Breakfast. I think there is a uh Yeah. It's been a while. And it might have Second changed breakfast. it to Alibaba. One of the cats is Alibaba. Yeah. That'd be a very old cat, though. She sends you a picture of your ancient cat, Alibaba. Uh, you know. <laughs> he just keeps on ticking. Can't nothing take him down. Yeah. Yeah. And she says, you okay. know, be careful. Asking kind of when you'll be back and stuff like that. But what you'd okay. expect, really. Um... Anybody? Yeah, I'm gonna just text you back. I'm not sure yet. Blah blah blah. Anybody else Whatever. wanna wanna reach out to the loved ones? That's uh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Already done. Thumbs up emoji done. Yeah. Okay, so so is the plan then? Are you guys going to the snooze in? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's you know it's probably about a 45 minute drive. You guys are able to pile into the van. Um, and click the button. The garage door goes up. And you guys are able to exit this place, and you know, and probably for the casual observer, it probably looks like that. You know, some some workmen were were at the house. Um, Benji, as you as you're leaving, if you know, we'll say Benji's sitting in the passenger seat. Um, you look out again at the uh, Remax, you know, Realty for Sale sign with the image of this woman on it, and you were just you're so uneasy of this feeling that you have within her within you that. And it's something that you guys had actually talked about while you were in the night world when you were talking about, I think someone had hypothesized it. I don't remember who it was. They're like, are these demons all just regular people? Uh, well, something that came up. And you kind of have this idea, kind of go through your head like, like, is this like, yes, like Benji's super into all this and wants to know and wants knowledge. But there is this feeling that's like, this could be dangerous. Like you, you don't know. Uh, but she looks so innocuous there on her, in her sports coat, you know, her little sign in in this suburb. Mm. You guys pull out and you make it to the snooze in about 45 minutes. You drive through some bad parts of town to kind of get there. You come up on it. You, uh, they are, you know, you, the three of you, who goes in? Does anyone go in specifically? Hank will go in. Uh, you check for bed bugs. I'm terrified of bed bugs. <laughs> then I'll come in. Well, I, th I figured he'd pay at the front. And he's like, oh, he doesn't have any money. He's like, uh, Benedict, uh, I need some money. <laughs> oh, God damn it. You people. I'm running out of money. But he'll begrudgingly give him some money. Do you, you have a few standard purchases left, don't you? I do. <laughs> Only a couple. Go ahead and um, wipe one of those. Um, are you for this shitty hotel? Are you, this shithole? Well, how long are you? Spend, okay. Well, okay. How are you playing? I'm paying. Are you just swiping a card? Or are you throwing some cash at it? Because we're gonna say no, that no, no. we're gonna say that your illicit money is basically cash based and almost uh, yeah untraceable. Oh yeah, yeah. No, he'll hand over some cash. I mean, like guys, no longer using credit cards. No, no more digital trails. All right. If you need money, yeah. talk to me. And if we're out of money, we'll go break into an ATM. Sounds good. Uh, he'll go in, you know, pay for it, and be like at the front desk. He'll be like, "Now, if someone comes around asking for, if three older fellas in a van stop by, you know what to say." And hands are a little bit extra. 
okay yeah the lady there she goes <laughs> she she takes the money she takes the money that you gave her for the room how long she asks she does ask you at the beginning how long do you want to stay just one night like what do you and she she does see we'll, we'll that there's the one she, we're gonna say one night and we'll come back if we want uh, an okay. extra night well I, I actually she might tell you that you can only do one night at a time you know, that's just the kind of place it is. Uh, but she does see these other gotta, two men in the van. She's like, no parties. You got a continental <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> is Benji there? She's yelling from the van. <laughs> <laughs> Hank, ask if they have the breakfast. <laughs> um, well, Hank, you're you're in there. And she, you know, she takes the money, extra money you give it, and sticks it in her shirt pocket. She's like... She's like, uh, she's like, oh, don't worry, uh, we, don't worry, we'll uh, we'll take good care of you. Uh, Hank, go ahead and make me that alertness check. Oh lord. Yeah. Uh, Tell me what you get. Uh, success nine. Hank, you you know a lot of dingy places like this, they'll have security cameras, right? And they'll have the TV, you know, screen with the cameras on it so that you can see that there's cameras. That's the whole reason they have that. Uh, so they want people to know they're being surveilled. Hank, you look you look up at the camera and you see you see your van. Uh, maybe you can just make out Benji, you know, uh sitting there in the side of it, you know, as you guys are pulled up outside. There's, you know, there's probably like six cameras in this whole place. But you look, and you look at yourself. And there's some type of weird digital artifact that you cannot make out your face at all. Mm. Like, what? and then as, and maybe Hank, you see this, and maybe Hank, like, kind of, like, moves to the left or moves to the right a little bit. You know, trying not to look weird in front of this lady you can't make out your face whatsoever oh shit Hank doesn't comment on it yeah and she says she's like uh, what name should I put down she seems to be um, she doesn't ask for an ID or anything you know she's like uh, what, what do you want to be put down uh, for the room uh, Tom Cruise Tom doesn't doesn't check up <laughs> Tom Cruise she, junior. She junior. She writes cruise with two O's. Uh <laughs> and says, Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Cruise. Have a good evening. Remember, no parties, you three. No worries uh, about that. But he's still kinda like looking at the video. Yeah. Weird. Okay, uh you guys make it up, you're able to take your duffel bags wherever you have. And you guys had packed, you know, to come to Boston and to go to Vegas, you know, you uh um, you have all your stuff with you. I want to establish how much, how many weapons we have. Because I'm looking at my character sheet, and it's just like a jumbled mess of every single item that I've ever had throughout oh, all three oh, chapters. Oh, damn it. <laughs> we had said originally that you guys had brought your pistols, and I believe the shotguns, and someone has a rifle. I think Hank might have a rifle, and I think the other two of you have Carcosian shotguns. I have a rifle. Mm -hmm. um, Hank has all sorts I of shit. Hank has this yeah, whole I've tactical. A, I have a heavy pistol, an M4, a shotgun. Yeah, yeah. I've got the same, except no shotgun. I thought you would also have a club, but I think that was from the that was from inside uh, the night world. You don't have that anymore. I don't have that. Yeah, I thought you had had a shotgun, but if you say you don't, you don't. I think I was the only one that pulled a shotgun. They got rifles. At that, the time when we we're getting more shit. No, but no, they no. You have a rifle. They both had Carcosian shotguns that they got from the library or from the bookshop at some point in time. For sure, but I just also have a regular shotgun. Okay, uh, you can um, give that shotgun to Benedict if you want. Uh, Benedict, you can have a tactical shotgun. It's like a. Don't your, your, mind if I do. Your classic like police twelve gauge. Um, so yeah, that's all your weapons. You also have the Jamblets, and you have a single IED. You have some flashbang grenades, directional mic. Yeah, you know, if you have some some equipment. Well, <clears throat> when we get into the hotel, the room, Hank's also going to search the room. Okay, go ahead and roll me that roll. 
Benji will six, as well. Six says fifty seven under six. Never mind. <laughs> um it's cleanish. The 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 sheets are clean. It's a it's a it's a two a double queen uh room. Um and you so someone's either gonna you two of you are gonna have to cuddle or one of you will crash on the couch. Um it's yeah, it's cleanish. You don't find anything interesting in the room. What's yeah. the bed bug situation, Hank? No bed bugs. No bed bugs. All right. Yeah. Um. I guess we're uh, settling in for the night. Hank wanted to do some research. Mm-hmm. Basically, uh, yeah. I guess I might as well roll. I'm gonna use uh, the Wi-Fi and. Um, let's see if I can roll something, uh, search-based. I guess there's not, like, a technology surf search-based. Give me something like, jeez, I don't know, like, like maybe a bureaucracy or a history or something like that. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, bureaucracy is what I'm going to roll. Okay. Just to find, uh, you know, kind of go deeper than the first Google page on this Right. What person. do you... What are you gonna look? Failure. The matter failure. Okay. Uh, what what were you looking for, like? Um, I was looking at anything uh about her history prior to re- realty. Oh, the uh, Malthus, the the yeah. demon you'd seen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can't find it. You might maybe find a LinkedIn page or something. It's not interesting. Gotcha. Benji is thinking about, like, he's just trying to predict the shit storm that they're about to walk into. And I think I want to roll a Carcosian Clockworks to see if I can figure out what type of weapon would be most effective against these constructs. Mm. Like, <sighs> yeah. I mean, uh, nice. the ID worked pretty damn good against that t- terrifying baby. The chair. I think but it would like, be okay. Well, but what if there was like a fucking ferret chloride bomb that just like instantly flash rusted all the parts? Okay, oh. make me. This make, might be. All right, go ahead. Yeah, but make, make me roll. Let's see what you get. If you if you do really well, might give you something. Rolling in that real world knowledge. I like it. Yeah. What did I get? What did I get? Oh, some bullshit. It's uh, a failure. failure. 42 over 36. You think that these things are probably, I mean, they're not exactly organic and the means by which they work does not entirely make sense. Um, you know that the IED, you're, you are fairly sure the reason the IED killed this thing is because it just did so much damage at once. Like, you think that was yeah. the big thing. It was just like, it was just a devastating attack. Um, you think that these things are, if, if Benji is sure of anything now, is that these things are very, very dangerous. Like, and that killing them, like, kind of similar, like, when you guys attacked the mannequin, um, you know, when you guys were in the library, these things are dangerous and difficult to kill. They're probably unpredictable. And the means by which they work, it doesn't have to make sense. And there's a part of Benji that understands it, of how they work, how they're powered, but there's a big part of them that doesn't, you know? Like, because it doesn't make sense, because it's not natural. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Benji types in on Google how to kill clowns. <laughs> you find a lot of stuff. You know that scene in Zombieland where he uses the hammer at the end on the zombie clown? <laughs> you get you get several iterations of that. Uh, hey guys, check this out. <laughs> You've blown the case wide open there. Yeah, he's done it. Hank just like stares at it and it's like the kill bill <laughs> <laughs> like like zooms in on his eyes yeah ain't that hilarious hank let's watch it again and again <laughs> 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 a bead right. of sweat trickles down his forehead so what are you guys All gonna right, do so... you're just gonna get some pizza and fold the... there well, there probably is a couch you can probably fold out the couch bed uh like so one of you could sleep on that um, yeah benedict think... wants to chat to the lady in the front to maybe try and get some surveillance or an idea of how exposed they are tactically hmm 
Okay. Uh, I don't. Can yeah, I, I mean, persuade I mean, her you could... to let us know? Oh, give okay, us a right. ring if, if anybody shows up. If anyone comes, give you a ring. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you want to persuade yeah. her to do that, then why don't you use your persuade skill? Oh, um, I'm such a persuasive character. 60 under 61. Ooh. Oh my god. Very nice. <laughs> so I think that's the first time he's ever that's, persuaded somebody. That's oh, and some tea. Some tea, please. That's technically a well. really strong roll because the higher yeah. it is and still succeeds is technically better. Um, you you don't have to pay her off again. Maybe she, and she's already been sure she's been buttered up a little bit, right? You my know. darling. Uh, she and you know Here we go. And maybe she does. Maybe she does. You know, you ask for some tea bags, and she pulls out. You know, it's like shitty, shitty tea. You know, like she but she pulls out some little tea bags and like gives you like a little coffee maker. Like they don't just give you the coffee maker in the room. You have to come ask for it. Uh, ah. So they, she gives you like a little coffee maker, and she uh, she's like she's like oh yeah, you know like if uh, you know your friend there. Uh, and she kind of, for a second, she kind of like, it's like she's going to say his name. She kind of looks up and kind of has this vacant look on her face. She's like, yeah, uh, we can, uh, we can absolutely, uh, if anyone comes looking for you, asking around, I'll give you a holler. How about that? Just come visit me, uh, before you guys leave. Okay. Gives you a wink. <laughs> Benedict is into it. He's like, yes, yes, ma'am. Reminds me of home. Ooh. I like it when you call me ma'am. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you think that... You, you, you seem to be able to persuade her. And she tells you that... You know, uh, that her... You know, that she'll let the next person know... Come in, you know, to keep an eye mm -hmm. out for you. Um, Alright, Benedict will also mention this to the rest of the guys coming back to the room. That it seems like... She struggled to remember your name, and not just because she was being coy, but I think she legitimately wasn't. Something's up, something's up there, Hank. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. Strange. So yeah. Um, well, fellas, uh, how I think I made it where I stand. I would prefer to find these this hotel ourselves, but we've had no luck uh, this i mean benji with uh, you we've been to these other realms i mean how hard do you think it would be for us to find this hotel ourselves part of me thinks the only way to do that not necessarily going back to new york but possibly the hotel where we found the evidence for you know i forgot what that was the room the boxer hotel you know room 616 Mm -hmm. you know we, we also found we definitely Jay know we, his jacket there yeah, yeah we could possibly skip a few steps and go straight to the lake you know we're swimming if we go through the mirror uh that'd be very risky that sounds extremely dangerous you and i both saw that leviathan swimming around in there we got to get some more info on that we got to figure out how to protect ourselves I'd be suicide just trying to swim through them waters. And it, Benji, do you remember, or have you ever come across anything about tattoos in your studies? Yeah, I, I got the whole dang Ars Goetia tattooed on my body. That's your shirt Because, because <laughs> the lady at the top of the program, she had those voodoo protection tattoos, and maybe there's something like that that might help us at this point agent charlotte yeah. mm. let me dig through my vast amount of knowledge <laughs> benedict is all up for that at this point he may have had reservations Are we gonna get some tattoos. prison tats in the hotel he's gonna get some voodoo stick prison and poke tats. oh do some sticky pokey a classic stick and poke uh can i roll a cult to see if there's any sort of glyphs or wards protective glyphs you know funnily enough i would probably say you know that's really more of an unnatural thing if you're looking at i don't know like you can give me your occult if you do if you do really well on it then we may you may be able to do something with it would i get a better result if i succeeded on an unnatural i'd say you get a better result if you succeeded on unnatural all right let's gamble uh, what was that? Oh, major 
failure. 76 over 28. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, you uh, you don't get anything. You don't get anything. You think that, like I said, I think when you guys have seen them, you, like, just Benji with his extreme occult knowledge, you would know that that's, like, you think that it's, um, that's Caribbean in nature, probably related to voodoo or, um, Voodoo or actual, or like the classical, actually, like voodoo um, and protection from hoodoo, which is like black magic. Um, but beyond that, you don't know if it's necessarily something specifically has to do with this. It's also worth noting that when you are like, you know that this stuff exists and the study of these things exists already. And I think that you don't know if, you know, those. Keep in mind, this is a high-ranking member of Delta Green. The idea that somebody is fiddling around with protective runes might be, you know, kind of makes sense. This is really creepy. Since all this is going on, I just got a text from an unknown number says, Wild wants to talk, says you owe him a story. Whoa. <laughs> this is Joe. Joe's messing with us now in real life. Brilliant. What's that number? Uh, well, we're recording. I'll say it afterwards. No, it's... You can say it. Huh? You can say it. Uh... 616-483-2235. 616 is familiar. Does any other... Or, does anything else stick out? Wait, is this part of the game? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, God. What? what? <laughs> is it? <laughs> oh, my God, Joe. Joe, this is too much. This That's is, amazing. This is, uh, this is crossing a line, man. This is crossing well a line. <laughs> okay, who's wild? Oh, wild. Okay. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, we, yeah. We do owe him a story in exchange for the the, the information wow, that nice he gave job, us. Joe. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. Hank's like, Hank's like, uh... Fellas, uh, I got a text. Um, no, 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 Brad you know, got that text. Brad. Oh, okay. <laughs> not, not Hank. <laughs> um, okay, layers on layers. Oh, Lord. Who was Wild again? Um, he was the guy with the fucked Mr. up face. Mr. Wild. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, uh, we sort of circumnavigated him and went straight to uh, the source. We didn't, we never oh, actually God. agreed to give him a story, did we? I think you did. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. We agreed, but we okay. never gave it to him. Uh, Brad, 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 send him a number. Send him a message. New phone. Who dis? <laughs> no, <Naturally. laughs> <laughs> Hank does that. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, you send a message. Uh, you see the little dots appear, like the person is res is responding, and it stays that way for like five minutes and then goes away. <laughs> so you think. Uh -oh. <laughs> Joe, is it fair to say that if Benji does some research about this tattoo thing, that I could roll another unnatural tomorrow? Because I really like this idea. Okay, I will say, you know, so we're, we're getting kind of late in the afternoon here. If Benji wants to spend the rest of the night beyond sleeping, um, doing this, just doing this, that tomorrow he can roll another one. Cool. How about that? He's going to, do I have any pills on me? He pats himself down for pills. Roll that luck roll. Gotta get in the zone. Uh, 33. That's a critical success. Uh, you know, you... You're you, overflowing. You know, you... Yeah, <laughs> you, just, you open your pockets and just Xanax just come spilling out. Uh, <laughs> no, you, uh, you, you think you're like... At first, you pull out the pill, the bottle you have in your pocket, and there's like two in there. But then you remember, oh, wait, I'm an idiot. You reach down there and inside fold it up in one of your socks is an entire new bottle. <laughs> nice. Have you been walking around with this bottle in your foot this whole time? No, yeah, no, no, I no, forgot in his about bag. my sock pills. No, no, in his bag. Oh, in his sock oh, bag. Okay. Like, no. in, like, folded up in a, a clean pair of socks. <laughs> I was wondering what sort of sounded like a maraca every time <laughs> I took a step, <laughs> and it was my sock I, pills the whole time. Sock, classic <laughs> sock pills. Okay, kind of uh, giving us our position away a couple times. Sorry about that, fellas. So that's what Benji's going to be doing for the rest of the afternoon. 
Um, what about the other two of you? Is like, is there anything else you want to do, or do you just want to kind of like, you know, just settle in and get ready to rest? There's mm -hmm. that other realtor that nobody's looked into. Mm -hmm. uh, Marie J. Malthius. Mary. Marie. Yeah. Um, do you guys have... I don't remember. Do you guys actually have a hard copy of the Ars Goetia? I don't know if you... I mean, I don't think so. I have mentioned multiple times that it's. I've got it tattooed on my body. Okay, so uh, at some point in time, Benji has his shirt off. Uh, and and one of you guys are just kind of reading the Ars Goetia off him. Uh, I actually, like, I will say that, you know, you've made it clear to these guys and that you have probably been able to find an online copy. Um, you, you recall uh, one of you other guys. Actually, the two of you give me intelligence checks. Benedict and, um, Benedict and Hank. Give those to me. Success, 26, under 70. Uh, Benedict, you recall that... Uh, Earlier. You recall that, yes, there is a Malthus, and that was the seal. But you recall there's also... Or, sorry, that there is a Malthus. That was the seal you find, but there's also a Malthus. Yeah, I saw that. Um, Which bears a striking uh, resemblance to, uh, to Marie J. Malthus. So one has a PH, the other one has a TH. Um, mm -hmm. Does anyone want to read the entry for Malthus? Malthus, or Halthus, is an Earl of Hell, commanding 26 legions of demons, who is said to have a rough voice when speaking. He is often depicted in the shape of a stork. Malthus buildeth towers, filled them with ammunition and weapons as Hell's own armor. He is a prince of Hell. He is also said to to send his legions into battle or to places designated by higher commanding demons. Oh, that's sick as fuck. Fill them with ammunition and weapons as hell's own armor. Armor. Yeah. So it's two of them together working at this Remax. Yeah. You have cards so. for both of them. For both of this uh, Marie J. Malthius and Patrick McSwain. Or Patricia McSwain, pardon me. I think we need to hook up with Malthus and get some hellish explosives. Let's get some guns. <laughs> All right, Hank has one more thing he wants to do, like at the late at night, if everyone's up, whenever everyone else is fine. Uh -huh. Okay, Benedict as well, but his is going to be a little bit more esoteric. So he's he's going to sit very quietly, like he's probably going to try and meditate and and think deeply uh, to try and make sense of that entire experience. I don't know if there's a... I think what I'm trying to do is maybe derive some insight into the nature of what we just went through, Joe. And is meditation like an occult activity? Hmm. Is it like personal human to Give me a to power roll. Ooh. That's not a great stat that I've got there. Is it not? No, let's do it. What a shame. That's a success of 40. Nice. Under 45. Okay. Um, what do these meditations look like? I mean, are you literally Were sitting... Were you flashing something? No, I was looking uh, at, okay. for something. Um, okay. What do, what do these meditations look like? Like, what is Benedict doing? Uh, he's... He's trying to think back through the entire nightmare dream that was shared. He's trying to piece together pieces of that overlaid with the characters like Ed and the weird Dr. Max friend and his like his likeness to Dr. Dallin and Asa Darabondi and all the characters that overlaid with our regular lives. Um, and I think he's trying to focus on understanding what the meaning of patsu was if that was like reality embodied in this weird place yeah so i think he's just trying to make sense and piece something together about that experience a lot of it you're not able to come to anything i mean you are just you know you're sitting here um but you know one of the things that you do kind of come to conclusion is like the idea of dallin it seems that some you know 
as you're really thinking about it, the what you mentioned, the similarity between Dallin and Friend. Um, even this kind of go-between between, do- between Mr. Wilde and Ed Whist. Um, mm-hmm. But then, oddly enough, then there was Timothy Bale, who seemed to be represented in both places. Um, it's hard... It's hard to say because it's like it seems that in many ways that there are things that are people are mirrored, right? That people are mirrored, but they're mirrored imperfectly or they're mirrored just a little bit differently. Um, and as you're Did thinking, we ever catch a glimpse of ourselves in that world? You, call, you thought you'd caught a glimpse in the library of the scene where you and Benji had found the guns. Mm. Um, in the bookstore. Yeah, in the bookstore. Right. But, as... but I mean, like in the mirror, sorry to keep harping this point, but did we ever see ourselves in this world? Were we mirrored in some way, or did we just appear to be ourselves in this time and place? There was nothing specific, but okay. to that end, you, at some point in time, Benedict goes into the bathroom, small bathroom, decently clean go in and you're looking in the mirror and you remember this world that was beyond the mirror this vast ocean that was beyond the mirror and I would say that before Benedict necessarily realizes what he's doing he finds himself tracing his own version of the yellow sign on the mirror much like you had seen originally you had seen the marks in the Samahina home Benedict begins to make out the sign he begins to draw it out with his fingers and there's a moment where you detect just the slightest of ripples in the surface of the glass mm. Mm. you pull your fingers back it's like that scene in in the matrix where like you matrix. pull it back and it kind of sticks to your finger for a second <laughs> okay he's gonna wash his face and get out and try and tell the guys, listen, just uh, found myself drawing the symbol. Um, maybe we need to go to the bathroom together from now on. <laughs> you never know. Did your hand start to go through the mirror? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I've done that before too. Yeah. <laughs> <It's pretty trippy. laughs> I, d- I don't like it. No me gusta. <laughs> no me gusta. I mean, it'd be- be pretty sick if we could make our own portals to the labyrinth. Oh, we wouldn't have to go nowhere. It's at will I... into the night floors. What I if we both traced it together? What if I come behind you and hold your hands like that scene in Ghost? <laughs> <laughs> Hank will take the couch and sort of keep watch the night. Yeah. Whenever they're, uh, you know, ready to go to sleep. Yeah, um, that'll, and that'll he, make Benedict sleepy. He'll, uh, you know, in the middle of the night, super late, get up and start smoking and look at the text, and then realize the 616 is the name, is the room number they were in. Right. In the uh, or, sorry, I, yeah, yeah. So now he suspects that's where he'd have to go to talk to Wilder, or they would have to go. Hmm. But, um, uh, now, uh, I guess he's just going to let the paranoia take him. He's, you know, looking at the text, uh, the Benedict saying he couldn't, the front lady couldn't quite remember his name, the blurred image of his face. Uh, this is a lot, but I'm, let's, I'm going to try to do this as less intense as possible. Joe, if possible, he wants to try to go to the control room where they had the tape and rewind the tape and look at them like entering the hotel and stuff like that. There's not really a control room. This is not that kind of establishment <laughs> that has right. a security. But I'm sure there's like an this. office where the tape's being recorded of sorts. There might be like a small office kind of behind the counter um, where the the person sits at the front. Um, if you want to try to convince no, this person that you can go in there. No other door to the office. There's probably a door to the office. There might be a window that acts that's out to the back of the building if you want to try to sneak in. Um, otherwise, otherwise, like you know, you think that maybe, you know, maybe you're still in these people's good graces. Maybe you could, you know, you do have some, you know, you have a badge. 
you know, and that kind of thing. You could always kind of try to swing your weight around, or you could just try to persuade, you know, or you could sneak. You could pull out your gun, um, put it in their face, tell them to let <laughs> you see the fucking tapes. <laughs> Um, Hank is, uh, will try to persuade, and could he maybe get a an advantage on that since he's in their good graces? Roll me a luck roll. Okay. Failure. It's a, a new, four. um, it's a new, new person. By the time you get out there, it shifts, it's changed. So, you're just okay. gonna, you're gonna have to do it raw. Hank, uh, raw, you say. Raw. Um, Hank is going to, uh, go the bad route and says, uh, excuse me, uh, sir or madam, man or female or... I will say it's a man. Excuse me, sir, I don't know if, uh, yeah, the, uh, person that was here before told you the whole situation, but, uh, we have a little bit of agreement and if, uh, it's not too much to ask. I would like to uh, step into the office and look at some tape. Uh, investigation, you understand it, and he shows his badge. Okay, uh, roll me like a persuade. You can take plus 20. This is like, it's like a 19-year-old, you know, who like has like a textbook out in front of them. You think that maybe they might be a student. They're like working the night shift. Failure shit. Wow. He's like, he's like, I, mm. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't think I can show you show you this um but like even while you're standing here you're still looking you're looking at this at the screen you can still see your face is all fucked up mm. like it's like someone has put a filter over your face didn't we see he'll this the, somewhere i'm he'll, sure he'll we've seen this the, before he'll ask the kid he's like well i understand if you need to check with your manager uh, just a cause for concern about the video quality here and he points to the screen does the guy the, act like he sees anything the same thing that hank sees yeah he turns around he's like oh that's weird he kind of like hits the side of the tv he's like yeah i don't know hank's not gonna try to do more but okay uh he'll head back to the hotel and try to get some sleep okay um so that is you guys for the rest of the evening um you guys, you guys lay down to rest, um, and you you do get some rest. Uh, Benji, uh, oh, BT Dubs. Hey, Benji, remember how you uh, you had lost your insomnia? Yes. Okay, when you had a break, that all came back. Ah, uh, hell. Yep. So, right. uh, so if you have it marked, if you have your insomnia like marked out or something, you got some notes on it. Go ahead and put on there that it is uh yeah it, it's back uh so i think we had said previously or i think the way it works actually for insomnia is you have to roll some type of roll to actually yeah, um, attempt to sl get decent sleep what was the roll here I'm, i can probably pull it up here um in so insomnia see it's gonna take me a sec to find it they're alphabetical geo you're better than this there we go sleep disorder that is uh go ahead and roll a sandy check i understand that's not the best for benji Success, 10 under 37. Oh, lo and behold, Benji, That's you, my were, boy. you were able to take, have a pretty good sleep. Um, the other of you, the other two of you, maybe you hear him kind of tossing and turning a bit, uh, but he does, you are able to actually get asleep. Um, so we can update our sheet again. Yeah, go ahead and update your sheets again for any failures. Um, anyone who uh, who needs willpower, Let's yes, see. please. Um, I can do what with that again? Roll. I think I think willpower is what you roll like a uh, you roll a d4. Okay. You get that much back. I might be wrong. Gotcha. And well, I, I was only one point away, So. Oh, same. 
Yes. God, we're like we're so bad at this. Because I like, or I am so bad at this I never remember to do all this. Um I believe you roll a constitution check, and if you pass, yeah. you get one back. One? One. Just back. one. Just one. Did, did you both heal up a bit? Yep. yep. Yeah. One. <laughs> Hank, I, for, I didn't notice Hank was so low. He's at seven. Yeah, you yeah you got close you got to dying by a clown in in that clown man. <laughs> well, it's like, and the weird thing is, it's like there is no physical like outward injury that you have. Um, just hematomas. Yeah, like it just it was almost like, and when it happened, it was almost as if it was like boiling it out of your body. Like that's very much the sensation Shit. you got. You guys wake up in the morning. You guys wake up in the morning. There is no breakfast. You can make a coffee on the coffee pot. You know, maybe you guys ordered pizza what? last night or something. Um, you know, but it all seems to have gone fairly quiet. I don't know. It was like, were you guys like sleeping with your guns under your pillows or like, I know Hank probably Hank, was. Hank definitely was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Benji was sleeping the... with his heavy pistol in his hand with his finger on the trigger, just like thrashing around the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> just like. <laughs> Like sitting up over the night and like swinging it around, like pointing it around the room. <laughs> yeah. Benedict's got a picture thing. of Michelle still, just under his pillow in his hand, uh, and a shard of glass that he goes to sleep with now. The shard of the the mirror. Of the mirror. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, you guys. You guys wake up in the morning, and you know maybe maybe any any of you who hadn't showered the night before, you know, I feel like Benedict, you definitely find yourself like reaching out and touching the mirror as you're brushing your teeth <clears throat> um just kind of stroking it and it does not feel entirely solid um you know you and this this seems to persist um but you you guys all at some point in time someone turns on the tv there's like a little tv there um and maybe there's the typical news cycle it talks about the weather you know it's going to be like a chilly kind of september day you know autumn's like you know kind of just kind of starting to set in um and then you hear a, a and you kind of get to like the 24-hour news cycle you know like local news for boston and you hear uh you, i don't know if any which of you is like kind of sitting there watching it maybe as you put on your shoes you hear um uh, uh, this just in breaking news from Boston Metropolitan Police Department. Three men oh, no. are believed to be on the run uh. after escaping the Dorchester uh. Mental Hospital yesterday afternoon. The three oh, men God. are shown. Uh, it's like, and there's like, you know, you see like there's like a picture of all three of you. You know, it's like on the Jeez. screen side by side. And it's all you. Damn it. And it's each of you guys standing. Who's watching this? Who's in there standing watching it? Like right when it ha starts to happen. All of us? Sure. Mm. Like or you guys can all definitely come in. Like maybe Benedict brushing is still teeth. brushing his teeth. Yeah. Uh, it's like. And you see that the pictures are all of you. And they're pictures that you don't remember taking. They're like very blank. Holy shit. Very neutral pictures of you standing just in front of a background. So it's like. Uh, reports that the three individuals are mentally unstable and may be related or may be uh, associated with domestic terrorists. Uh, police, oh police, police warn that anyone who sees anyone, uh, there is a hotline on the bottom of your screen there. Uh, please call that number. Uh, these men are considered to be armed and dangerous. Uh, any reports... Please, please let us know. Uh, is, isn't that terrifying, Janet? Uh, escaped, escaped mental patient. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that scary? Uh, and they kind of throws a shoe at the they TV. They kind of start talking. <laughs> uh, everyone, roll me an alertness check. Do they say anything about? Paid off the fucking. Do they say anything about a cash reward? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, law enforcement is offering a ten thousand dollar reward uh for any information that leads to the uh to the to the capture of these dangerous these dangerous people benedict i know how we can get your money back <laughs> oh no this is not the way uh, benedict fails alertness success for benji, benji. Uh, 
success. Yeah. All right. Um, so make sure to always mark your failures. Um, who succeeded there? That was Hank and Benji. Hank and Benji. Hank and Benji, you guys are looking at these pictures of yourselves, and you notice that in the kind of bottom of the frame, kind of like cropped out, um, it appears that all three of you are holding kind of, you can just barely see it in the bottom of the frame. It looks like you guys are all holding in some figuration uh, bottles. Uh, each one what? being a little different from the other one. In the picture, and it's like a sterile picture with like I guess like a the Dorchester like plain wall background. Yeah, it's like just we it's like... just a weird neutral background that has no detail. But like I said, in the bottom of the picture, of the frame seems to be each of you kind of holding a bottle. Like maybe maybe Benedict is holding his by the neck. Uh, you know, Hank is kind of like cradling his. You know, and Benji is kind of holding his in both hands, like you'd present a wine bottle. But like it's kind of like in the bottom of the frame, you can just barely make it out. And that, my friends. Mm. It's probably uh, a good place to call it for today. Nice. So we uh, are out of our root timeline, and we are into the timeline that we were hallucinating. That's what I was wondering. Like, what's it? Well, not necessarily because the one we we're hallucinating was like actually in Carcosa because there's shit going. There's like a war going outside the hospital in that timeline. Mm. So save it for the sanity uh, check, guys. <laughs> save for the sand check. <laughs> All right, everyone, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, we it's good to be back. I'm hoping that we we get to just stay back on our actual uh, you know schedule. Uh, that being said, though, uh, I do want to thank uh, some new folks, some new people who have joined us, our patrons. Uh, Yay! Oh, uh, we got three new ones. Uh, it's it's been a while because we didn't do it for the for the one shots and we didn't do it for the session zero. But uh, I want to let you know that we really appreciate it. Uh, John, Kurt, and that looks a lot like Emu. Um, so it's spelled the same as Emu. So uh, or or Emu, whoever it is. Uh, but thank you guys. Thanks for joining us yeah. on our Patreon. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It really really come helps. into our jambulance. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the Jambulance. <laughs> it's good to have you. Uh, <laughs> you know they're not going to hear those effects, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just for us. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we really appreciate you guys. Uh, like I said, it helps us to do things. Um, it helps us to, you know, to be able to host our stuff. And hopefully I was actually wanting to try to get Jean a, a real mic. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. It's soon, soon. It's coming. Soon, soon. But uh but yeah, thank you very much. Listen, uh, connect with us. Uh, all of our socials are all down in the description of where this is. Connect with us. Uh, hey, go to Spotify, Apple, wherever you're listening, or even YouTube music, I think, um, and leave us a review. Uh, leave us a, a good rating. We really appreciate it. Um, besides that, guys, guys, thank you. Thank you. I gotcha, man. Thank you. you. That was so fun. I believe I could go for another. <laughs> well, yeah. do I have good news and for I have you? Some more. <laughs> yes, we're gonna we're gonna uh, get back in. We're gonna record our next episode. But for those who are uh, yes, for those who are watching live, uh, stay tuned. We're gonna be back. For those listening, watching later, thank you very much, and catch us next week as these guys try to figure out what the hell they are gonna do. The manhunt is on. They are officially on the mm. lamb. But guys, sheesh. Let's, let's do it. So, uh, but everyone, thank you very much. We'll catch you next time. And remember, as always, stay safe and stay sane. Bye. Peace.